One of these ETFs in this video would have turned $10,000 into over a million dollars in a little over 10 years. Yes, you heard me right. $10,000 into over a million dollars in about 10 years. But you're not going to get outsized returns without higher risk. Life really doesn't work like that, guys. You want to be a millionaire in 10 years, but then you see a 10% correction, then you freak out? Come on, man. If you can handle some volatility, in this video, I'm going to give you three different categories of ETFs and specific ETFs that can make you rich quicker. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows, and we're going to explore that in this video. But as usual, though, none of this is financial advice. I'm literally not a financial advisor, guys. I'm just a guy on the internet. Knowledge. So let's start with the hottest new ETFs on the market. Can you guess? Bitcoin ETFs. Yes. If you don't hold any exposure to crypto, honestly, guys, what are you doing? Fidelity Canada includes it in their all-in-one portfolios. Countries are buying it. Institutions are hoarding it. Companies are buying it. And you won't even put like 1% of your portfolio into it? Really? Like, come on. If you don't want to worry about transferring Bitcoin, storing it safely, how to use it, but you want the upside potential of Bitcoin, then the Bitcoin ETFs are the perfect way for you to gain exposure to the price. Since the launch earlier this year, guys, you would have had a 43% gain already if you bought day one with that giant pump and dump. Now, yes, with Bitcoin, you will experience drawdowns. The last Bitcoin drop took us about 77% downwards, so that's a large correction. But like any other long-term investment, guys, if you buy the dips and hold tight, you'd be doing really, really well, as you can see with the current price chart. And you see these little arrows right here? These are each times I put out videos saying, hey, maybe consider Bitcoin. And even if you bought it the latest one, you know, you'd be doing pretty handsomely 60% gain in about three months. So yeah, that would have been really nice. At this point, guys, like 70% of my net worth is in crypto and Bitcoin, and it's been doing very well. So if you don't want to buy any, that's on you, not financial advice. And we can check the recent price appreciation when the ETFs launched on the 11th of January. So this is Fidelity. Right now, if we change to a percent gain since launch, it's up at a 43% gain. If I lay over SPY on the same chart, we can SPY is at a 7% gain in the same time period, which you can see right here. So 7% versus 43% during the time period, I'm gonna go with Bitcoin right now. Now the ETFs I personally buy are FBTC, Fidelity's Bitcoin ETF, and BITB, the Bitwise Bitcoin ETF. If you're curious about why I chose these two specifically, it's because Bitwise has been in the crypto space for a long time, has a very cheap expense ratio, and they host their Bitcoin on Coinbase. Then I also purchased the FBTC, the Fidelity Bitcoin ETF, because they have their own Bitcoin using their Fidelity platform, so then the risk is spread. So I have some on Coinbase and some with Fidelity hosting. If you want a deeper dive into the Bitcoin ETFs, look at this video right here because I explored them all. So if you want explosive gains and don't mind some volatility, definitely check out Bitcoin ETFs. 7% versus 43 in the same time period. All right, so number two, and this is gonna be no surprise to anyone, so we'll just kind of zoom past this one, is a technology-focused ETF. So that's really VGT, guys, the Vanguard Information Technology Index, or QQQ, the NASDAQ 100. Now, both of these ETFs favor a tech focus, and tech has been booming over the past decade. If we look at QQQ, guys, this thing has been a monster compared to SPY. Look at that. This has your Apples, your Microsofts, your NVIDIAs, things like that. If we look at Portfolio Visualizer, guys, and compare 100% VGT portfolio and 100% QQQ portfolio, we can see they track relatively the same during some time periods. We can see Invesco QQQ outperforms during some time periods, and right now, VGT is outperforming because VGT has more tech. But why would you consider one over the other if they track relatively the same? One is because QQQ is not exclusively tech. This is the NASDAQ 100, which are the 100 largest companies. So this still includes things like Pepsi, Costco, Starbucks, other non-tech companies. I don't think you guys would consider that tech. VGT, on the other hand, is exclusively tech. This is the Vanguard Information Technology ETF. And we can see a lot of the holdings. Down here, if we keep scrolling, is application software, communications equipment, electronic components, battery, internet. So this is 100% tech and all their holdings. And then why to consider QQQ or VGT? If you like to trade options, QQQ is your friend. You can see we have zero day. It's about the weekend, but they have daily options on all of these. And then, so there's many more options. The options chain is much more active. If we go to VGT and we trade options on VGT, you're going to have seven day, a monthly, and then you have 126 days out. So if you like options, definitely QQQ. If you don't care about options, maybe consider VGT, but consider this is information technology when QQQ is a NASDAQ 100. And QQQ has a slightly higher expense ratio, 0.2%. VGT is 0.1. I don't really think that's a big deal, but just consider that in mind. 
When we consider how both of these compared to SPY over the last little bit, we can see the technology-focused ETFs have been largely outperforming. As with SPY, you would have had $62,000 since 2004. QQQ, we had 129. With the Vanguard information, we would have had 131. So over double the investment of investing in these NASDAQ 100s, the technologies, ETFs, versus investing in SPY. If we look specifically in the past 10 years, the past decade, we can see this holds true, but we can see SPY had the lowest max drawdown. So always remember, more returns equals a larger drawdown, as we see QQQ, 32%, also VGT, 32%. So more gains, more drawdowns, so just keep that in mind. And let's especially keep that in mind for the last type of ETFs, the ETF that can turn $10,000 into a $1 million in 10 years, leveraged ETFs. And I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for even considering this as a long-term position, leveraged ETFs. But the math doesn't lie, guys. If I put $10,000 into TQQQ at the start of TQQQ, guys, I would have over a million dollars at December 31st, 2021. And the fund started in December 31st, 2010. So that would have been over a million dollars from $10,000 in 10 years. But the reason to not consider these as your whole portfolio is because the drawdowns are very large. Imagine going from a millionaire, we can see right here, all the way down to a 200,000 air in a year during the last bear market. So most of us cannot stomach that type of drawdown, an 80% drawdown, literally going from millionaire status to 200,000 air status. I mean, still great gains from $10,000, but most of us can't stomach that. But what is a triple leveraged ETF? If we look at QQQ and TQQQ, that is the triple leverage fund following QQQ on a daily time frame. All this means is if QQQ moves 1% in a day, TQQQ moves three. If QQQ moves minus 1%, TQQQ moves minus 3%. To me, the fact, this is a fact, that TQQQ could have turned 10 grand into over a million dollars is a reason to consider triple leverage ETFs as a long-term investment. The main ones are TQQQ, triple leverage QQQ, and SPXL, which is triple leverage SPY. They also have two times leverage options like SPUU, two times leverage options of SPY, and QLD, which is two times leverage QQQ. Now, when we talk about leverage ETFs on this channel, I'm not talking about your whole portfolio, but what about like a couple percent depending on your risk tolerance? Yes, the risk is high with large drawdowns like we've seen right here, like investing in Bitcoin, but in our $10,000 example, we have gone from $10,000 to a millionaire in 10 years, but then back to a 200000 air in a year. I mean, still amazing returns, but that's very scary. So with the risk so high, guys, what if we just considered a couple percent in our portfolio to get really good gains. So that way we don't experience the large drawdowns. This might be something to consider. And also, what happens if we slowly DCA'd into TQQQ instead? We can see if we bought the peak, we wouldn't even be at our all time highs yet. We'd still be down. So what if we did a slow DCA? Fun, let's start with $100. Let's say we threw in 100 and let's contribute a fixed amount. Let's say $50 a month. Let's see how that looks. So if we contribute $50 monthly since January, 2011, what do you think our portfolio value is going to be? This is insane. $50 a month would have turned into $167,000 in 10 years. That's nuts. How is this not a viable small portion of your portfolio? $50 a month in your portfolio probably isn't that much of a percentage if you're contributing regularly. This is definitely an asset we need to consider long time. Guys, let's say we even started right before COVID. We had the crash. We had 2022, the downwards projection of our portfolio. What would have happened? We would have $100, we would have had the March word up to $7,000 within two years, guys. And yes, we had a large drawdown. We would have had an 80% drawdown on our TQQQ we were buying. But we would have been at break even at this point if we contribute $50 a month. So that's why this may not be considered a main portion of your portfolio. But for $50 a month, guys, like to have a grand within four years for $50 a month, this is just ridiculous to not even consider like a percent to 2% of your portfolio with these outsized gains. Now, if we look on TradingView, if we bought at the high, $89, we're nowhere close to the high. We're still down. We're still down 35% if we unfortunately bought at this point. But that's why we should DCA into these funds if you utilize these. If you plop all your money at the wrong time, you could suffer an 80% correction. That's huge for your whole portfolio. Now, yes, the expense ratios are high on TQQQ. Yes, they're high on all these ETFs. Yes, there's worries of volatility decay if it chops sideways. Yes, there are risks with these ETFs. 
This video is titled ETFs to invest in to make you rich faster, not how to safely invest in the market so you can be rich in 40 years. <laughs> we want to get there faster, so volatility come, but if we play these correctly, be saying in, these are large rewards. But remember the beginning when I said you can't have a portfolio that has high returns with less risk? I actually lied because I discovered one that does just this over the past 10 years, and you can watch that video right here. If you want less drawdowns and higher returns, make sure to check out that video. Peace.